dreaming and to say I'm excited about the craft projects for today is an understatement because I am so excited. Um, if you've been looking at Pinterest or watching crafters on social media, you, you've probably seen people use all different kinds of things to make pumpkins. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can take a Dollar Tree hardcover book and turn it into a pumpkin. And you can also take, you know, these little book things, the, these little faux books that usually have some haunted house stuff on it. You can turn these into pumpkins too. So it's gonna be super fun. I think you're gonna really love it. Um, I know I do. And this is where we're going. I would do a set of three of each. So that's where we're headed. Let me set these back here. And let's jump right in and get started. Okay, so we're also gonna be using some of these things. They're called wood stems. They're from Dollar Tree. We're gonna be using some twine. You could use corks if you wanted, if you didn't have those wood stems. We're gonna use this paint, which this color is awesome. This is Waverly Chalk Acrylic Paint from Walmart. The color is pumpkin. And then I made my own blend of blue to paint the um, hollow books. So I used um, a combination of peacock, pool, and agave. So, but these colors, you could do absolutely whatever you want. All right, let me move those out of the way. And then um, we're going to use some awesome stencils and some almond chalk paste. And probably we're going to just add some pretty vintage mother of pearl buttons. Uh, so let's start at the beginning. Okay, this is one of the books that I bought at Dollar Tree last week. I was excited to see it because it had this white... Um, cover and the inside of the pages were kind of, I mean, it's really more cream. Um, and it, it was a pretty book. You, you're going to toss this part. So I was excited about that. I bought three and I had other plants. And then, I don't know what happened, suddenly it occurred to me that these books would make the best pumpkins. And by golly, they do. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the inside part of the back cover because that will be visible uh, when you set your pumpkin up and these can stand alone so they can be really cute shelf sitters in a combination of three. So I'm using my pumpkin and a skinny brush and it's always going to stay close so it doesn't even matter if this part is neat. You just want to get that inside uh, lip of your book covered. I, I didn't do this the first time and I thought it looked kind of unfinished. So, get that done. So how is everyone doing today? Who has started making pumpkin crafts? Anyone? Oh, Terry, you're so sweet. She says she loves my creativity. This is what I do when I don't sleep, and I don't sleep a lot. <sighs> I just start thinking about ideas and making notes. And, yeah. Okay, so this is what I painted, and it's the back of the book, all right? Um, I'm going to grab one of my Wilton pegboards that I sometimes like to craft on because I don't want to make a huge mess here with my orange paint right before we're going to be doing some of the other fun stuff, so let me just get that off. Okay, so we'll paint on this. And at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to take your book and basically open it 
and you're going to kind of lay it down like this. And then we're just going to paint all of this. And it's really easy. I did two coats on the orange ones. And I did two coats of the blue also. So we're not going to paint another blue one because I knew I would never be able to match that color in a million years. So I did all three of them at the same time. And do try, if possible, not to get your paint on the pages. I made that mistake with one of them. I'll show you in a minute. What is too long for nearly everyone? I missed the beginning of that. Okay, so I'm just going to do, we're only doing one coat. I just want to show you. The other stuff, uh, the other books that I have here to work with, I spent the morning preparing and getting them all pre-painted and ready to go. But you can see, and this doesn't even really have to be neat. It really doesn't. This uh, Waverly paint, if you've not worked with it before, it's, um, it is really nice because it is so thick and it works great for this project. Okay, do you want to get the edges? And I'll show you my finished project from yesterday. We were making pumpkin topiaries and um, on my live, I just did the one, but last night and this morning, I finished it up. I made two more little topiary things. Um, so the big one has three pumpkins, the next size down has two, and then the, the other one has one. Okay, so I will give my um, book a while to dry, and then I'll give it another coat. Okay, so you saw how easy that was. Ooh, and I see already. I'll touch up the areas that are kind of messy when I'm not live anymore. So let me find a spot to put this. And let's move on to the next step. Okay, so I painted these little boxes. They look like this and they have, they have them at Dollar Tree in the Halloween section. Um, so I painted just the front, the spine, and the back, all right? And I did two coats of this color that I created in a paper bowl with mixing some of these um, uh, Waverly turquoise-ish paints. So I have two of these, and then I have my orange pumpkin book, which you can see right here that I painted that back area. But when it's gonna be sitting up, it will look better. All right, so what we're doing is we're putting a pattern on all three of these, a different one on each pumpkin. And um, when I started, this was the first one I made, and I went clear to the edge of the spine. Okay, and then I just tied it with some twine, put a button on here, pulled the twine through that, and then I added the stem. And you could take this further and do some Spanish moss, uh, some leaves, whatever you would like. Here's the blue one. Pretty cute, huh? So let's finish the other pieces that I have to go. And um, let's see, I was thinking that I want my patterns to not compete too much. So I have this little flower design. I'm going to do a stripe. And then I'm going to do the, my favorite, my Victorian pattern stencil on one. And um, I'm using almond colored chalk paste. Okay. Uh, so I'm just trying to see, I guess, 
I'll do, I think I'll do this little blue one first. And I'm just going to run my stripes up and down. This is, uh, the stencil I'm using is called Ticking Stripes. I don't use it very much. I don't know why. I really like it. It reminds me of ticking fabric, which is one of my favorite things. Okay. And I didn't fuzz it because I've used the stencil so many times that it barely has any stick, stickiness left to it. Okay. So I'm just going to take some almond latte chalk paste and put it on here using a small cut apart squeegee. I'm really hoping that I got my lines straight. We'll find out, I guess. Of course, I have too much paste right there. And I'm gonna go clear up to the top, clear over to the side. Okay, and then I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do this spine. Sometimes when you're working with a stencil that doesn't have a lot of stick left to it, if you just put some chalk paste on it, that can help almost kind of glue it down. Okay, so I applied my chalk paste and now I'm just using the flat side of my squeegee to pull off, pull off the big clumps. it looks pretty good we'll see oh it sure does oh my gosh okay let me throw this in my tub of water and it will get washed um, and then when that other orange book is dry I will use that stencil on the other orange book okay so here we go isn't that cool? I'm going to let it dry here for a little bit. And let's move on. Let's do next up. Um, I have two of these stencils. This is my Victorian pattern stencil, which is seriously my favorite. It has no um, direction that you have to go, which makes it really nice to use. And this one has, I know they say, you know, everything has a, a shelf life. And I think Magnolia says 15 or 20 uses or something like that. But I use them until I just can't use them anymore. And this one, I'm sure, has been used at least 60 times. I'm not even kidding. It looks terrible. It really does. It looks super terrible. But it works just fine. It has hardly any stick to it, but that's not a big deal. Okay, so I got the front of it. Get some cloth out of that crease. And now let's kind of flip it over. I'm gonna do this back spine. You could do the back of the book too, if you want, but I opted not to. I have chalk paste all over my hands, all over my table. Oof. Okay, so I'm gonna Use the back of my squeegee to take any big lumps and clumps off. Oh no. Oopsie. Okay, let's just, let me clean my hands and then let's look at it. Let's do the pillow and reveal. So what do you guys think so far? Oh my goodness, and thank you so much for all those stars. 
I really appreciate that. Okay, I hope it looks good. It looks pretty darn good for saying that this stencil is an oldie, 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 oldie. Okay, I'm gonna set it over here so it can dry. And I'm gonna throw this in my tub of water. One thing about using stencils is you want to pick things that are going to be super versatile so that you can use them all year long. And to me, the most versatile stencils that are totally worth every penny are the ones that have patterns. Um, let me show you just a few of those and I'll show you the one that we used for the first, um, first one. And then we'll finish this last box. Okay, this is called Flower Power, and it is this. It's an awesome stencil. So each one of my a set of three will have a Flower Power. There's that one, and here's this one. All right, and then each one will have a ticking stripe, and each set of three will have a uh, Victorian pattern, okay? So I'm gonna come back and do that. But also there's some other great ones that I just wanted to show you. This is called Lace and Berries. This one I've been using a lot lately, a lot. I did, no, I did not do that one with it. Um, anyways, it's Daisy Pattern, but to me it looks like sunflowers. And then this is awesome. This is the fall leaves that I use a ton. This is my new one, so I could show you what it looks like. And this is mine that has been used way too many times. Uh, and then, of course, the Mandela Lace is an awesome one, too. And, yeah, that's what I wanted to show you for right now. Okay, so before we do this, let me just show you my completed project from yesterday. I'll tell you about it. Here it is. Okay, so yesterday we made this piece. And I, I changed things up a bit since yesterday. Let me tell you what I did. I cut the pumpkin smaller, the two on the top, because I felt like the scale was wrong. Also, I added a little bit more of the paint, the same pumpkin orange, and then this is a green, Waverly called uh, Fern. And um, yeah, okay. And then I made this one. It looks like a lollipop. And then I make this one. And I think all together it makes sense. It's a little hard on this on this camera to see, you know, each separate piece, but they do stand out in person. So, what do you guys think? Oh, and then also I added some ribbon to my container, which I had several people ask me yesterday, where did this container come from? This container most likely came from Goodwill, but I've had it for a million years, and uh, two years ago when we did all those stuffies, those bunnies on um, wood dowels and Easter eggs on wood dowels with the navy blue ticking, I used this. So I just recently took those out, and I'm using it for this right now. Isn't it cute? If you miss this video, it is here. And um, you can watch it whenever you would like to. Okay, so let's go on to this one. Again, um, two coats of this blue I created by mixing some blues. Um, oh, I did forget something that was important. 
Okay, I, I decided to spray my hollow books and my, you know, painted solid books with a clear mat sealer after they were fully dry before I stenciled. And I used this, Rust-Oleum American Accents, two times ultra cover, matte clear. It's just a clear matte sealer spray. And what it does is it helps you get a little crisper stencil impression. And if your stencils are a little on the sticky side, um, you want to fuzz them really good. We're going to fuzz this one that we're going to use in just a minute. But it makes it so it's less likely that you will pull up your paint. And I'm really hoping that we don't pull up the paint on this one. Okay, where is my fuzzing towel? I think it might be in the wash. Okay, well, I'm going to fuzz on my apron. And I'm going to use my newer... Mandela Lace Stencil for this. And what is fuzzing? Fuzzing is really just putting a little tiny bit of fiber on your stencil uh, so when you pull it up, you don't end up stretching your stencil. And if you've ever had your stencils um, look like they're curling, it's because they weren't um, fuzzed enough and they were stretched a little bit when you were removing it. So, okay, where do I wanna put things? It really doesn't matter because this is beautiful. The whole thing is a gorgeous stencil. Let's just go in the center. Oh no, did it pull something up already? No. down. I'm using the Almond Latte. This is a great color. I've been using it a lot lately. Oh, and this is what I ended up doing with those jars that we etched. I put the little stir sticks in one. I put my squeegees in another. And then the big one has my glue sticks. Just sitting right here on my craft desk. And I think they look pretty. all the way to the edges and all the way out to the spine. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean this off here. I'm gonna pick up the excess with the straight part of my squeegee. The lumps and clumps, I'm just grabbing those. Okay, so now let's just flip it over Pull it tight and we're going to do the spine. This one is stickier for sure. This Victorian pattern is, it is my serious favorite of every stencil that Magnolia has. And it's also the pattern that I tend to use the most. I feel like you can make this look like it's a Christmas stencil by the color of medium you use, whether that's chalk paste or ink. You can make it look like Easter. You can make it look like anything you want. Just get that way. Okay. Let's have a little look. Hopefully... Oh, it's perfect. Okay, this is going in my tub of water too. Okay, let me show you. Isn't that pretty? And just so different. I, um, you know, I love, ha well, I don't love Halloween, but I love fall. I love doing fall projects. I love doing autumn pumpkins and that kind of thing. And, um, where's my lid? Sorry, I'm 
coming right back. Uh, but sometimes I want to just put a little fresh spin on the whole idea. And I think this does just that. So let me show you the three of these. And I don't want to fiddle around with it too much right now because I don't want to mess it up. But let's go ahead and put the stems on them, okay? And, um, yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to give them some time to dry. Okay, so there's tons of things that you could use as stems. Twigs. Uh, you can make it out of a paper bag. Um, corks. But I'm using these. They're, um, they're just wood stems from Dollar Tree. Nothing super special about them. I'm looking for a bigger one for the big one. We'll use that one. And then a smaller one for this one. And I'm just going to put some glue on here. And seriously, just plunk it in the middle-ish. Okay, so then my next steps for these, which I can't really go up, proceed to, but you can, I wanna give you all the instructions. Um, because the, the chalk paste is still wet and I really don't want to mess it up and also I kind of want to give these another quick spray of clear matte sealer before I tie everything up. But I just went around my pumpkin books three or four times and then I pulled this jute string through some holes and some vintage mother of pearl buttons. Um, Look for the ones that have the bigger holes, and you'll, you'll be able to do it. Then I did one knot, and then I put some glue on the back, and I just glued it onto the jute that had been tied around it um, three or four times. Easy. Easy, easy peasy. That one is wet, and this one is wet. This one is dry. Do you love this? You guys, I totally love this. I have been so excited all day long to bring it to you because I just think it's so different. I, um, I'm, there's nothing new under the sun. Have you guys heard that expression? There's no, no craft project out there that you could conceive of that somebody hasn't done. But I haven't seen this. And I haven't seen the hardcover book either made into a pumpkin um, and like I said at the beginning you could do some Spanish moss or something up here so we're not going to do this one because I want it to dry before I fiddle with it and the other orange one um, is still drying and it will need one more coat of orange paint but Let's review real quick. Let me move this out of the way. Put the ones that we have finished here so you can see what we did. Okay, so these are those little hollow books that you can get at Dollar Tree and Dollar General. And you, at, they're stacking. They were three graduated sizes. They were $1.25 each. They, they're like faux books. Okay, and these had a Halloween theme. So I painted these with a mix of Waverly because I didn't have the right color that I wanted. This is pool, Waverly paint. This is peacock. And this is agave. So I just mixed up a little concoction in a bowl and I painted two coats on all of these books, okay? Um, these two are the other ones, and they are still drying. So I will tie them up good when I'm all finished, but look how cute that's gonna be. 
What do you think? I think it's going to be adorable. Let's see, I would arrange them probably with this in the center. I don't know, I think they'd be great sitting on a mantle, on a bookshelf, really anything like that. And once you tie the jute around them, the little front cover won't open. Okay, so then I stenciled them. And if you would like information about these stencils, which are so easy to use, they're super versatile. You can use them many, 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 many times. They're a great investment in your crafting supplies. This is called ticking. No, this is flower powder. It's a great stencil. This is um, Victorian, which is my favorite, most versatile, and this is ticking. And they'll look like a completed set when they all have the ties on them, you know, and the little button. But what do you guys think of that set? Okay, let me move these out of the way. I'm glad I put the little stems on them because, uh, oh, and I'm noticing that I actually did this upside down. Oh, well, it does not matter because I'm going to tie this book shut anyways. Okay, and then the, um, these are just a hardcover book that I painted with two coats of pumpkin, Waverly chalk acrylic paint from Walmart. Then I sprayed it when it was dry. Then we stenciled them using the same stencils. This is the Flower Power. This one right here is the Victorian pattern. And the other one that's over here still drying and we'll need one more coat of orange paint. It will be the ticking stripe. And then I tied three or four, went around the tummy of this three or four times with this jute, same process, put a button on it and glued a stem on it. So there you go. There are my, um, uh, I'm just gonna call them book, unique book pumpkins. Uh, one set's made with the faux hollow books from Dollar Tree. This set is made with the hardcover real books from Dollar Tree. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you decide to do this, um, I want to see pictures for sure, okay? And especially if you put your own spin on it, which is what I hope you do. I'm just doing these crafts to get your creative juices flowing to give you ideas and the steps. And then I want you to do these projects in your style, in your colors, in the designs that you like, that, that make sense with your home decor or if you're making them for gifts for the recipient's style. Um, so if you decide to do these, I would love to see pictures. And I do have a free um, crafting group called Dreamy space DIY. The most creative people in the whole world are over there. They're crafting and sharing pictures of their craft projects and ideas over there. So I would love to have you join that group. It's Dreamy DIY. You need to answer the questions uh, that are asked at the start because we cannot approve your membership in that group if you don't. And, um, and then hop on and just start flipping through the millions of photos and add your own if you decide to do this or if you end up doing this pumpkin topiary or anything else I want to see pictures oh thank you Helen says she loves how I come up with ideas alrighty you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day I will see you later um, let me know if you have any questions. At, just say link or stencil if you want a link to any of these stencils or chalk paste. The color we used, again, was almond latte. Alrighty. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day.